Welcome to High Fine Stage Dives, a SoCan licensed podcast coming to you weekly from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Each week, I talk about a song that's been stuck in your head at one point or another, or stuff you've never heard before. Welcome to this musical journey. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of High Fi and Stage Dive. If you recognize this little rip that's playing right now, <laughs> totally rad. This band and this artist and them as a whole, um, I found by accident because of the way they, basically the way they did all their advertising and like getting it out there. Uh, this is 30 Seconds to Mars. Jared Leto, when he started this band, did not want anything to ride on the coattails of him being an actor or having to do anything with, with acting and stuff like that. I found them by accident because of a... Well, not by accident, but I found them because of a music video they did. Their music videos, by the way, bonkers. What's some of the greatest mini-movie things that I've seen? I don't know. Maybe because I'm a fanboy of it? I don't know. I talk about them at the very end. I talk about their, their stuff, so... This band has gone through many, 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 many bandmates. I think uh, it has a little bit to do with the accusations of Mr. Leto being kind of a prick and being very weird, so it would make sense. So let's get into this, and I'll break her all down. We'll go on this adventure of 30 Seconds to Mars, and I'll tell you a lot and why I like them. Feature song, The Kill. Reason why I picked this song, it's one of the, it's, it was my nemesis song for a long time. I, I used to play it acoustically, also like this. It's my favorite song in many ways. Um, I like what he says in it, I like the chord progression, and I loved the challenge, and it still challenges me to this day, singing this song, because Mr. Leto has an amazing fucking voice, so. 30 Seconds to Mars, also styled as the number 30 with Seconds to Mars, uh, they changed that later on also, because of their first album and some crap, I'll get into that also later. There's an American rock band from Los Angeles, California, formed in 1998, the band consists of brothers Jared Leto, lead vocals, guitar, bass, and keyboards, and Shan Leto on drums and percussion. I'm glad they put drums and percussion in there because Mr. Uh, Shannon Leto uh, plays a lot of different percussion instruments. During the course of the existence, it has undergone various lineup changes, which I mentioned, and it's down just to the two of them. They're originally, I believe, uh, they're from, yeah, Louisiana? The band's debut album, 30 Seconds of Mars, in 2002 was produced by Bob Ezrin, and released to positive reviews, but only to limited commercial success. The band achieved worldwide fame with the release of their second album, A Beautiful Eye. Amazing fucking album, by the way. Both of them are great. Which received multiple certifications all over the world. Its next release, This Is War, in 2009, showed a dramatic evolution in the band's musical style as it incorporated experimental music as well as an electronic influence. The recording process of the album was marked by a legal dispute with record label EMI that eventually became the subject of a documentary film uh, Artifact in 2012. I highly suggest you check out this this documentary. It's really great. Um, not just because it's 30 Seconds to Mars and I'm a fan of them, but because it, it really shows the record industry and the shit that they went through to make albums and stuff like that. So... Yeah, go check it out. It's awesome. It's all over the place. 30 Seconds to Mars then moved to Universal Music and released their fourth album, Love, Lust, Faith, and Dreams. Crazy, like, artsy videos. I touch on that, too, later on. To critical and commercial success. It was followed by America in 2018, which polarized critics upon release. Uh, let me talk about that really quick. This, their evolution of music, I think, is amazing. Um... This album playing right now at the moment is America, and on the front of it says Kim, Jesus, Michael, Mickey, Donald. <laughs> it, it's messy. It's supposed to be, but it's on purpose. Their evolution from the music they went to before, a lot of people I knew are like, oh, that's that emo band. I'm like, I guess, but it wasn't. He looked emo, like he had the emo hair, and they're, they're following the fashion at the time. Now his fashion is beyond. He looks like a weird Jesus, and he was also the star of Joker. He was a Joker in Suicide Squad. The most notable <laughs> character I remember him from is Lord of War when he's sniffing. It's Russia map in the line of cocaine. He's trying to sniff the whole thing. And also Requiem for a Dream, 
Another great movie. Uh, that was the first taste of Mr. Leto that I had was in Requiem for a Dream. Uh, he was on a TV show, too. I can't remember what it's called. It's really going to bug me now. But yeah, he was on a TV show in the early 90s and stuff like that, too. So he's always been acting. Started from nothing and got to where he was. He's just one of those people that was meant to do what he's doing. That's all it is. I guarantee it. Uh, but their evolution of music, I really enjoyed. I was blown away by this Walk on Water song in the wrong way. I didn't like it. Um, but then I listened to the rest of the album. The album is fucking great. I, I don't like I, It's okay. Like, Walk on Water comes on. I won't change it, I guess. I lie i have changed it <laughs> but it's a decent song i've always liked and he said it in his in his uh documentary and artifact the bigness he loves the huge cinematic style music and like the i, I that's what drew me through and through to 30 seconds to mars the bigness i've said this before i love big music i love symphonic music and i love it when the orchestra is huge and in your face uh read a really cool uh thing and it made sense. You feel the rhythm in your soul, but you feel the bass in your bones. Uh, I also uh, equated it to uh, the rhythm and melody and the bass in, in your bones. It, <laughs> it's one of the greatest musical quotes that I've heard in a long ass time. So, And that's that's how I feel. I had a chance to see them and I fucking missed it. I thought they would come through again, but that's when the whole lawsuit thing started. I was fucking so mad. And it was at one of our small venues. It would have been amazing and I missed it. So for those that don't like 30 Seconds to Mars, you're probably not listening to this to begin with. And if you are, thanks for listening. And I hope maybe change some things about it. I'm not saying I'm going to reform you into a 30 Seconds to Mars fan, but maybe there might be a couple songs that you might actually go out and check and you might like. If anything, go check out the videos because they're like mini movies and they're fucking great. So <laughs> as of September 2014, the band had sold over 15 million albums worldwide. And 30 Seconds to Mars has consistently enjoyed sold out tours and numerous headlining festival slots, which were bonkers, by the way. His shows are pretty nuts. He puts on a great show that they all do. I, what I like too is the, the inner interaction with the crowd and it's, it's a genuine interaction with the crowd which is totally cool the band is noted for its energetic live performances and for fusing elements of a wide variety of genres through its philosophical and spiritual lyrics concept albums and experimental music 30 seconds to mars has received several awards and accolades throughout his career including the guinness world record and has been included in krang's list of best artists of 2000 uh, the guinness world record is a tour and how many tours they did in a year and i, I talk about that after it's nuts so that like i said they got together in 1998 in los, uh, los angeles california as a collaboration between brothers jared leto and shannon leto who had been playing music together since their childhood the duo later expanded into a four-piece when they added guitarist Solo Bixler and bassist Matt Watcher to the lineup. Additional guitarist Kevin Drake, who first auditioned for the position of bassist, also joined the band as a touring musician, and the band played its first concert under a different name before finally settling on the name 30 Seconds to Mars, which was taken from a rare manuscript titled Argus... I can't, can watch this. This can be great. Apocryphix? Apocryphix. So Argus Apocryphix. Jared Leto describes the name as a rough translation from the book. I think the idea is interesting. It's a metaphor for the future. The fact that we're so close to something that's not a tangible idea. Also, Mars being the god of war makes it really interesting as well. You could substitute that in there, but what's more important for my brother and I is that the imaginative and real representative of the sound of music is unique as possible. This is how he describes the name. It works on so many different levels. A phrase that is lyrical, su suggestive, cinematic, and filled with immediacy. When 30 Seconds to Mars first started, Jared Leto did not allow his vocation as a Hollywood actor to be used in promotion of the band. And as I was talking about earlier, he didn't want anything tied to that. He wanted to do the band as the band and the band alone. He didn't want it to be tied to him being a famous actor in any way whatsoever. And I think that's totally rad. Because he could easily be like, yo, I'm checking my band. I'm Jared Leto, blah, 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 blah. You know, he could have wrote that. No, no problem. And people would have did it. In 98, the group performed gigs in small American venues and clubs. Uh, their debut album had been in the works for a couple of years, with Leto writing the majority of the songs. During this period, the band recorded demo tracks such as Valhalla and Revolution or Jupiter and Hero, uh, which later appeared on the band's debut album as Fallen and Year Zero. Also, Buddha for Mary, their work led to a number of uh, record labels being interested in signing the 30 Seconds to Mars, and eventually they signed with Immortal Records. And then in 99, they started, signed with Virgin Records and entered into a contract with them, which turns into a shit show later on, which I get into. <laughs> 30 Seconds to Mars 
retreated to isolation in Wyoming countryside in 2001 to record their debut album, working with Bob Ezrin and Brian Vitcher. They contacted Ezrin because they grew up listening to his work with Pink Floyd, Kiss, Alice Cooper, and they felt he was the only one that could help them capture the size and the scope of what they wanted to accomplish with their debut record. The band chose an empty warehouse on a lot of 15,000 acres. <laughs> And they striving for precise location that would enhance their sound. I think what happened is he took it like his, because he's a super method actor. And if you heard any uh, stories about Mr. Leto, he is fucking bonkers. So I think he, he really needs, he needs it to be right in the aspect. Like he, he would, he needs that for what he was trying to do at the time. He needed all that room. He needed all that, that area for the energy, for the place. Just, just that it, it helped. Put him in the place that he needed to be. Especially if you're working with someone that fucking did Pink Floyd. Like, you need it. It's the feel. <laughs> Even before the album was released, Puddle of Mud invited 30 Seconds to Mars to open a six-week tour with them uh, in the spring of 2000. The band later embarked on a North American tour to support Incubus and began a club tour in August. And that's probably when I missed it. Not happy with that. Not happy at all with that. It sounds right. Yes, when I would have missed it. The band released their first studio album, 30 Seconds to Mars, on August 27, 2002 in the United States through Immortal and Virgin. Jared Leto described the record as a concept album that focused on a human struggle and self-determination in which otherworldly elements and conceptual ideas are used to illustrate the true personal situation. Okay, that whole little bit that I just there, Jared's, you can tell he's like a, he's a smart guy and he's obviously very well read and very well spoken to be an actor the way he acts and the roles that he has taken. Uh, you can't, that just, it, you gotta be, there's something there for you to do that. And if you don't have it, you're not gonna accomplish that. And he pulls it off every time. So uh, the album reached 107 on the Billboard US 200 and number one in the US Top Heart Seekers, selling 121,000 copies in the US. It was preceded by the single Capricorn, a brand new name, which peaked at number 31 on the US mainstream rock charts upon its release. 30 Seconds to Mars was met with mostly positive reviews. Uh, music critic, Megan O'Toole felt that the band has managed to carve out a unique niche for themselves in the rock realm. The album was a slow-burning success and eventually sold 2 million copies worldwide on March 2011. I feel like um, he's he's harped on, like, uh, my old guitar player in one of my bands called him a pussy for doing Jared Leto. Jared Leto's being a pussy for doing this, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, but I'm like, he's got a great voice and he can produce music in a way that nobody else is doing it. And I guess it... The, the, the drastic difference in music at the time to what he was doing there, even now, it, it, I think now caught up with what he was doing then. Not in every way possible, but like even in his latest album, he does, uh, there's a track with 21 Savages and 21 Savages throws down some stuff on it and it fits just fine because Leto made all this music and it's fucking great because he's been making this music like this forever. Like it's just how it is. And his touring and his shows are nuts. Like the, the production that goes into his shows are bonkers. It's great. Like, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to go to one of these shows so bad. Not just the, don't get me wrong, I want to see the band. That's why I'm going to see it. But the production value is fucking totally worth it. So uh, in October, 2002, the band toured with I Mother Earth, Canadian band, Billy Talent, another Canadian band on MTV Campus Invasion. The following month, 30 Seconds to Mars made their first appearance on television on Last Call with Carson Daly and opened concerts for Our Lady Peace, another Canadian band, and Seven Dust, not a Canadian band. Seven Dust, another amazing band. Uh, they were in that whole new metal thing. So, great band though. That's when the Bixler left and was their guitar player and was uh, replaced by Tomo Malekovic. I can't say his name, it's crazy. Tomo's backstory was really cool too. I used to follow him on uh, Instagram and I had to stop on Facebook because he got like too uh, save the world-ish. And then there was like, like don't get me wrong, I, I don't in any way whatsoever condone animal abuse. And if I ever saw anybody hurting an animal, I'd probably kick their fucking ass. Like straight, not even joking. If I saw some stupid, I'd be beating the fuck out of somebody. But I, I don't need to see cats being tortured or dogs being tortured. Any animal for that being, being tortured. It's just so I stopped following him and it just I felt like it was it was weird because like at the time 30 seconds to Mars was posting like videos of what they're doing and stuff like that and Tama was posting these save the animal save the world thing which is absolutely fair but you can see I, I felt like I could see the, the split coming with these guys with it and I'll get into that later but his backstory is really cool because he he up and left from I believe it was New York or somewhere I can't remember exactly Eastmore he said fuck it this is it I'm going to do this grab his guitar and an app I don't think he had an app I think he just took his one guitar and his backpack little clothes if i remember correctly went and tried out got the job it was do or die at that point so 
And he did it. Shortly after that, the band later went on tour with Chevelle, great band, Trust Company, and Pacifier, and took a slot on the 2003 Lollapalooza tour. <laughs> 30 Seconds to Mars returned to the studio in March 2004 to begin work on their second album, A Beautiful Eye. With Josh Abram producing a recording process, the band traveled to four different continents to accommodate Jared Leto's acting career. That's nuts. <laughs> Uh, a Beautiful Eye was notably different from the band's debut album, and it totally was. That's what I love, the evolution. This is why I like 30 Seconds to Mars. It's different, but it's them at the same time, and it's still good. So, yeah, like I said, A Beautiful Eye was notably different than the band's debut album from both musical and lyrical aspect. On the first record, I created a world, then hid behind it, Little said. With A Beautiful Lie, it was time to take a more personal and less cerebral approach. Although this record is still full of conceptual elements and thematic ideas, it is ultimately much more wrapped around the heart than the head. It's about brutal honesty, growth, change, and it's an incredible intimate look into a life that is the crossroads. A raw emotional journey, a story of life, love, death, pain, joy, and the passion of what it is to be a human. Wow. <laughs> Jesus, titties. I like, because I've read this, but like to read it and say it out loud, it's different when I'm reading these things and then I read it out loud and hear myself say it. It's uh, it's a lot more impactful. And I like just read it again, but like saying it out loud, it's like it changes the way I listen to this album. That changed everything about this album. It was then released on August 30, 2005 in the US and it has been certified platinum by the Record Industry Association of America and has reached platinum and gold status in several countries with the sales total of over 4 million. During 2005, 30 Seconds of Mars went on tour with Chevelle Audio Slave, The Used. That'd be a great show. I know that people like The Used, man, but I, I don't mind The Used at all. Uh, the group embarked on their first headlining tour, Forever Night, Never Day, in March 2006. On November 1st, 2007, 30 Seconds of Mars won the MTV Europe Music Award in the category of Best Rock. The band also received the Kerrang! Award for the best single in two consecutive years, The Kill and From Yesterday. From Yesterday, another great song. So moving on, 2008 and 2011, This Is War album. Began recording their, thir their third album, This Is War, in August 2008. To produce the record, the band worked with Flood and Stevie Lillywhite. 30 Seconds to Mars had attempted to sign with a new label after a Beautiful Lie tour. This is where Artifact comes in. EMI, the partner label of Virgin, claimed that the band failed to produce three of the five records they were obligated to deliver under their 90, 1999 contract, which Virgin entered into with now defunct Immortal Records. Virgin Records uh, as a whole. Richard Branson, the owner of Virgin uh, Virgin as a, as a company, as a, I'm pretty sure he's an okay guy. He seems okay. I don't know. Like, I don't know from holding the ground. Uh, but from watching Artifact, it really like opened my eyes to a lot of bullshit that happens. You hear and you see it, but to actually see the lawyers part of it uh, from a band that, you know, was started in their in the 90s to now and missed the rush, the early rush of the bad contracts that people got away with to co solid concrete contracts that are out there now to seeing what they what they finally achieved it's totally worth watching it and it's a good little good little in insight to uh what they had to go through and what 30 seconds of mars really is made of and what they do and stuff it was really cool watching like the process of it all like because they touch on everything so it's, it's pretty rad after nearly a year of a lawsuit battle the band announced in april 2009 that the case had been settled the suit was resolved following a defense based on the contract case involving actress Olivia de Havilland. Decades before, Leto explained that the California Act appeals to the court rules that no service contract California is, is valid after seven years. So basically that they, it was over seven years and can't do shit about it. Then they went, 30 Seconds of Mars went and signed a new contract with EMI. Leto said that band had resolved their differences with EMI and that the decision had been made because their willingness and enthusiasm by EMI to address our major concerns and issues. The opportunity to return to work with the team so committed and passionate about 30 Seconds to Mars. I think what happened is they won their lawsuit and they realized how big 30 Seconds to Mars really is and how big it really could be. And they said, I think we fucked up. We should probably try and get these guys back on board here. And we'll do what it takes to do it. So good for them, man. They did this really cool thing and they called it the Summit at the Avalon Club in Los Angeles and they invited their fans to provide uh, backing vocals and percussion. So like if you hear like their songs and you hear like all like a crowd or a crowd of people singing, that's the fans. And that's that was another reason why I really I'm like, that's totally cool. Like it, it, you are totally involving your fans 
So there's like it was because it was so good. They did it again. Um, they did it in eight countries and they extended it digitally so you could put in your digital vocals if you wanted. The band also invited fans to submit close-up shots of their faces in order to make 2,000 different individual covers for their album. <laughs> and it, they were, they were totally different. Was, I bought that album and it was weird. Leto describes This Is War as a record about survival. I mean, quotes, it was a two-year creative battle that was ferocious and tough, but creatively rewarding. Hence like that song, I'm always trying to play by them. <laughs> And all those adverse elements in hindsight made us stronger and made this, the record stronger. After watching like all the MTV uh, things that they did, the specials or just the videos and period that they did, I think it's really cool that they, they get the real the realness of it, the realness of the people involved and the realness of the music. I mean, it, yeah, it's an act, but it comes from somewhere and it comes from somewhere real. You're inspired by real events all around you every day when you do this stuff. I see where he's coming from in that. The album reached top 10 on several national album charts and entered the Billboard 200 at 18, with the first week of sales selling six, uh, 67,000 in the US. Its first two singles, Kings and Queens, and this is where Kings and Queens, when that, when that song came out, I'm like, fuck yes. And this is War, that great. Reached the number one spot on the US alternative song charts. After a promotional tour in the winter of 2009, 30 seconds, the Mars embarked on their Into the Wild tour in February 2010. This is, this is a cool little cool little thing here. A song kick study indicated, this is the thing I was talking about earlier about the all the stuff. Song kick study indicated that based on quantity of tour dates, 30 seconds to Mars was among the hardest working touring artists in 2010. On October 16, 2011, it was announced that the band would enter the Guinness Book World Records for the most live shows during a single album cycle with 300 shows. <laughs> the 300 show called, this is on their album actually, Tribus Centrum Numera, it's uh, Latin, took place in December 7, 2011, Hamstern Ballroom in New York City, and was followed by a special series of shows, which marked the end of the Into the Wild tour. That was, that's that Guinness Book World Record thing they're talking about, that's crazy, 300 shows. That's a lot of fucking shows, man, like that's no joke. It's 2012 and 2015, 30 Seconds of Mars took a break from touring, well deserved, in 2012, and spent most of the year recording their fourth album, entitled Love, Lust, Faith, and Dreams. Uh, that, they did some crazy ass videos for that. Great, 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 great videos. Seriously, can't say enough. Go check the videos. The album was produced by Jared Leto and with previous collaborator Stevie Lillywhite. Leto said that the band took a new direction with Love, Lust, Face Dreams, which he totally did. He explained the album is more than an evolution. It is a brand new beginning. Creatively, we've gone in an entirely new place which is exciting, unexpected, and incredibly inspiring. I found it to be, that album, a little bit more mellow, but very impactful, I guess you could say. Great, very cinematic too. September 2012, Artifact, a documentary about the band's legal battle against the record label EMI and the making of This Is War, premiered in the Toronto International Film Festival and won People's Choice Documentary Award. I can't say it enough, go check out that documentary. It's worth it, it's great, it's really fucking awesome and it really shows a lot of shit that has and will happen in the future and stuff like that. It's great though, it, des it deserved that award, totally deserved that award. In February 2013, it was announced that Up In The Air would be the first single in the fourth album in par par this is really rad when I read this. In partnership with NASA, 30 Seconds to Mars launched the first copy of Up in the Air aboard Dragon spacecraft on SpaceX CRS-2. The mission was launched atop a Falcon 9 rocket on March 1st, 2013, sending the first ever commercial copy of the music into space on March 18, 2013. How fucking rad is that? On March 18, 2013, the single premiered from the International Space Station. After a Q&A session with the band, an Ex Expedition 35 flight engineer, Tom Marshburn, while Ansi Parker, mayor of the city of Houston, proclaimed 30 seconds to Mars Day. That's pretty rad. A day named after you? I was that name day after me. Ivan Day. What do you do? Nothing. Just do whatever you want. Uh, 30 Seconds to Mars released Love, Lost, Faith, and Dreams on May 21st, 2013 through Universal in the United States. The Love, Lust, Faith, and Dreams tour in June, which included festival dates at Rock, Wurcher, Pink Pop, Rock and Rio, and Rock AM Ring. 30 Seconds to Mars had announced on April 25th, 2015, they have parted from Virgin Records after tumultuous years with the label, with Leto telling billboards, we're free and clear and excited about the future. It's the most wonderful place to be. 
In August, the group embarked on a double headline tour dubbed the Carnivores Tour with American rock band Limp Bizkit. Keep rolling, rolling, rolling. Visiting arenas and stadiums throughout North America, 36 to Mars, then launched a music festival called Camp Mars. The first edition took place in Malibu, California in August 2015 and included a series of activities and a semi-rustic setting and several DJ sets. It, was, it looks pretty cool. It, basically, it's a camp for grown-ups and fans of 30 Seconds to Mars, and they do like uh, they do little shows and stuff like uh, exclusive stuff. It's pretty. It looks pretty fun. August 2016, the band revealed to have signed with Interscope Records. The group later un- unveiled that they would be embarking on a North American tour with Muse and Paris. I always thought this band Paris, that's spelt P V R I S, was the female equivalent to 30 Seconds to Mars. And I think they're great. Chick's got a great voice. And the music's good. I like it. Like I said, I listen to stuff because I like it and I give a fuck what anybody says. I don't. I don't give two shits. Um, <laughs> which took place May from May to September 2017. And then in August 2017, Walk on Water was announced at the lead, as the lead single from the band's fifth album, formed the song in 2017's MTV Video Music Awards, featuring special guest Travis Scott. During the ceremony, Jared Leto received media attention for his tribute to musician Chester Bennington and Chris Cornell, who both died earlier that year. I'd been listening to both of those guys for a long ass time uh i'm a huge i'm not a huge fan of the later lincoln park but i definitely like the new metal era of lincoln park because i was a new metal kid well not a new metal kid new metal teenager i listened to a lot of new metal when i was a teenager because that's what was going at the time and it was good so it, knowing i haven't i should have checked it out but i haven't had a chance to yet is i want to check out what he what his tribute was um being that leto is a great musician and artist like that i think he he definitely he definitely made something fucking amazing out of it so i know that for a fact you can can definitely count on that that also brings me to um if you need somebody to talk to please say something please it, uh, that dawned on me when i mentioned uh, last couple episodes it's like when i die i won't be able to watch all the star wars and it's unfortunate unless i get to get uploaded to the internet man if you die you don't get to listen to any more music anymore how fucking shitty is that you won't be able to listen to music anymore you won't be able to do all the fucking fun things that you used to do anymore especially if you do it prematurely man that's just you got so much to live for you can do it if you need help ask know somebody that needs help say something we got each other the human race there's still hope in humanity yet even though there's weird shit going on and we're in a weird spot that's not that's not nothing we haven't done before guys we can still do this okay that's my mental health psa you guys stay with me please thank you <laughs> february 2018 the band officially announced the monolith tour with walk the moon mr wives K Flay, Joy Wave, and Wesley Arms. K Flay, I believe they do a thing with K Flay on their new album. I think it's K Flay, yes. Or is it Halsey? One of them too. And they do a thing. It's a great. It's a great thing. There's a lot of uh, guests on the new album, which I, I totally like. Uh, Thirty Seconds to Mars then later confirmed America as the title of the fifth album, which was released on April 6, 2018. The album received polarizing reviews from critics. Debuted at number two on the Billboard 200s, becoming the band's first entry on the charts. America also reached the top ten in 17 other countries, including the number one in Germany and Australia. During the first leg of Mon- the Monolith tour, it was a announced that Tomo would be taking a break from the touring because of personal matters and on June 11, 2018 he officially announced his departure from the band. I don't know what the F happened there. I looked into some things. I think it was just, it, like I said, I think they just didn't mesh anymore. I think Tomo's views and ideals were somewhere else compared to Jared Leto's and, and uh, Shannon's. They were good. Like You can see too, like when in Artifact, you can see there's a little bit of like, not rivalry, but Tomo hold, will hold his own against Jared Leto, no problem. So... I mean, that's his thing. His thing was guitar and making it sound sound good, right? And Jared Leto is also good at this this type of thing. So I can see the little bit of it, of the, the headbutting there. But I think really it just it ended up Tomo's uh, ideals are just totally different and just didn't vibe anymore. I, honestly, that's how I think it is. But on that note, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, these videos that I was mentioning. You guys need to check out and list them all off and then I'll wrap it up. That's it, guys. So videos, the kill. <laughs> the feature song, uh, which is the longest running hit in the history of U.S. modern rock charts when it remained on the national charts for over 50 weeks. Its music video, directed by Jared Leto under the pseudonym Bartholomew Cubbins, received largely positive responses, numerous accolades, including the MTV Music Awards. Uh, he made like these things, that, like um, I don't know if you guys know what Funkos are, uh, like the little vinyl Funkos. And they got like I'm looking at mine right now. Got a Ren and Stimpy, an Eevee, a Darth Vader, and a Stormtrooper. 
and I got a little guitar guy and uh, one of the guys from uh, Ghostbusters. But he made these this big one and he it's like a rocket. He calls it Rocket Boy. And it's a rocket ship. It's totally rad about it. And I was so stoked. I didn't know it was him. And I found it was him. I was like, it's totally rad. Like, he made those. I'm like, that's fucking awesome. From Yesterday was released in November 2006 and became the band's first number one on the Billboard's Modern Tracks. Jared Leto dis- directed a short film for the single, which became its first ever American video shot in People's Rep- Republic of China. That is a crazy movie video. I think there's like ninja fighting and stuff. Totally, totally go check it out. And then The Kill, I believe, is um, The Shining. They kind of does the shiny thing a beautiful lie was released as the fourth single in north america and selected european countries its music video was filmed in <laughs> this is really cool it's crazy it was filmed 200 miles north of the arctic circle in greenland proceeds from the sales benefited the natural resource defense council um this video is rad like they are literally on an iceberg shooting this video totally crazy like i said these videos are nuts at the 2008 mtv music europe music awards on november 6 32nd to mars earned their second best rock and best video for beautiful eye 2010 mtv video music awards kings and queens received four nominations including video of the year best direction and went on to win best rock video on may 13 2011 30 seconds to mars recorded and performed for a television program called mtv unplugged you guys might know that one uh, i know they've been doing it for a really long time but nirvana made it famous but they were doing it way before that so it's just right place right time uh, they performed with musicians from the vietnam string quartet and invited a gospel choir to join them for the group rendition of U2's song, Where the Streets Have No Name. That's amazing. I love it. I think the a little bit of the choir, the choir went on a little bit too long. That's just me being hypercritical, but it was it's a great cover. And I think he, he does a lot of crazy covers too. Like he did a cov- uh, cover of Stay by Rihanna. He does it great. It just, he has that great voice for that shit anyway, right? Uh, at the 2013 MTV Video Music Awards held on August 25th, Up in the Air won awards for Best Rock Video. And that's it, guys. That's all I got. I hope you enjoyed 30 Seconds to Mars. I hope if you just don't know who these guys are, I highly suggest you at least go check out their videos. And for the people that do know them and that don't like them, maybe you do like them now. I don't know. I'm not saying that you do, but maybe you do. I don't know. <laughs> Like I said, like I go from so many different places, man, for music, from here to there, for like 30 seconds of Mars to like death metal. I am going to do some death metal in the future. I just, I re- I'm probably going to do the band Death, like I said before, because that was the first like real death metal that I actually listened to. And it was a cannibal course. One of the two. I'm going to do one of the two anyway. But like I said, I listen to it because I fucking love music. I don't listen to it for any other reason than that, for what it, how it makes me feel, to how it sounds and... I could give a shit less. I mean, unless someone's doing something super heinous that's, like, totally unforgivable. I don't give a fuck, man. If I like it, I fucking like it. And that's why I'm swearing. Because, damn it, I like it. Again, guys, if you need someone to talk to, I'm here. If you think somebody needs somebody to talk to, say something. You can't enjoy music if not alive. For me, music, like, like I said, music for me is deep within my soul and in my bones. And it's there, man. And it's there for a reason. It's one of those things that's always been around and always will be around no matter what. No matter what it becomes or evolves into, that's what it is. Again, thank you for listening to Hi-Fi and Stage Dives. As always, I'm your host, Ivan. And keep listening to music because it makes life that much better. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Thank you again for listening to Hi-Fi and Stage Dives. It means the world to me. I'm glad you could come on this journey with me. And we'll keep doing it every week. Subscribe, rate and review, all that good stuff. And keep listening to music because it only makes life better. And we'll see you on the flip side. Stay rad.